This show is brought to you by The Makery, the podcast network for makers. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another fine episode of the Knife Talk podcast. This is the Samoan Jack Black, also known as Marco Malmasi of Malmasi Fire Arts. <laughs> I'm here with uh, Craig Lockwood of Chop Knives and Mr. Jeff Fader of Fader Knives. Uh, sorry, I'm out of breath because I just got back from a bike ride, actually. <laughs> it's so nice here. I went for a bike ride and got some lunch. And I came back about 20 minutes ago, and I'm still trying to catch my breath. So... That, that'll tell you how much out of shape I am. But anyways, we're here to talk knives, answer questions, have some fun, give each other a hard time. We usually kick it off by starting talking with, about our week. Do you get, do one of you want to kick it off or should I get going? Um, yeah, go on. I will. Um, okay. It's been a super, super busy week for me. So when we finished the show last week um, was Friday night. So I worked all weekend, like 14-hour you know, each day, Saturday, Sunday. Um, That was the same right through till sort of Wednesday. And then the last two days, um, I've been working on the house again, flat out. So it's just been, yeah, crazy, crazy busy. Um, Loads of um, table knives for restaurants. Those three restaurant orders went out this week. Um, I made the silliest mistake on on a knife this week. And it really, really got to me. So... Um, a chef knife, um, standard sort of, you know, Western star chef knife. Um, and I had these uh, Michelin star pins made a while back. And this was for one of the uh, restaurants that ordered a load of table knives. They received their first star this uh, just a few months ago. Um, so, yeah, so we, I thought, well, I'll package this up for them as well. And so the, the blanks that I had made, the chef knife's, blanks that I've made I've been using for a while now and I, and I ordered you know a few hundred of them um so I couldn't really change the design much you know I changed the, the handle slightly um with regards to around the sort of bolster area I suppose um but this was gonna have this extra pin in um so there's no pinhole in there as such ready in the in the sort of laser cut out uh blank um and I stupidly didn't grind down the whole of the handle so I, I'd stuck the handle on didn't grind it back down to the to the spine and to the underside of the knife. Um, so when it came to drilling for this third hole, which is which is in the middle of the handle, um, it wasn't completely centre. Mm. And I'm talking off by two millimetres at most. Oh wow! Um, but this was a really sort of busy handle, so it was the um, lots of sort of re- recycled food packaging, and like, almost like a Jackson Pollock. All these colours sort of splashed all over. Um, and this pin, which is it's a beautiful pin, wasn't quite centre. And the knife was finished at this point. And I'm like, oh. so I, you know, I give it to my wife to have a look at. You know, do you see anything wrong with it? I always say that. Do you see anything wrong with this? <laughs> and if she sees something wrong, I know if there's something wrong, you know. Um, and she was like, oh, is this centre? And I'm like, oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it was right back to the drawing board to restart on that knife again. Um, but I'm so glad I did. I'm just, you know, I, d- I didn't want it to go out if it wasn't exactly perfect. Um, so, yeah, I redid it um, in a mad rush over 24 hours. Um, and, yeah, I was happy. So it was a bit of a lesson learned, really, you know, to, uh, you know, not let anything go out that's not perfect. <laughs> and um, it was... It was the... <sighs> I'm not OCD at all, and I hate it when people say they're OCD when they're not because you know it's a quite serious condition. But it was it was it was just so slightly off, and every time I put it down, I'd look at it again. I'd be like, "Oh fuck!" Every time I look it up, like, "Oh fuck!" Um, but yeah, lesson learned. Um, and yeah, that thankfully the remake was was far far better. So that OCD, OCD thing annoys the shit out of me, unless mm-hmm. you're knocking on the door ten times and like locking the keys, and you have to touch yeah. the knobs on doors all the time. I yeah. hate that shit. Yeah, everybody and, says, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a touch OCD. So, um, yeah. Anal retentive is a different story, but it, it is funny <laughs> that it's usually, it's usually, it's your guilt complex. Hmm. Be- it's not like OCD. It's like you're looking it up and every time you see it, you're just like, I really could have done better than that. And mm-hmm. you know it. And you know, as soon as your brain says, I know it, it's all over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had Amy's father here. He's been doing some work on, on this house. Um, and so I said, oh, have a look at this, John. What do you think? And he's like, oh, look, perfect to me. I'm like, oh, fuck. So I've got one person say it's perfect and one person they can just see it. So I said, I was setting it down on the bench and I'd go back to it every sort of 10 minutes and look at it and just, uh, 
really got to me. So yeah, that was redone. Um, and I spent the last two days um, finishing up the bar, well, the pub in the new house. So um, it's my wife's birthday this weekend. So we've gone back under lockdown as well, unfortunately. Um, so what it does mean is that we can do something. We can go to the pub and we can have a bit of a party with, you know, with our twins and, um, you know, make something of the day. Um, but yeah, we're back under lockdown. Shops are closed. Um, the curfew remains, a 7 p.m. curfew. Um, it's, yeah. Um, it's, it's particularly tough because the weather's got really nice. Um, the clocks have changed. So, you know, 7 p.m. still feels really, really early. But no, you need to be in the house and... Is what it is. Is what it is, I'm afraid. It's a drag. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm speaking to friends back in the UK and things are sort of lifting in the UK. Um, so they're now allowed to, you know, meet with other people and all the rest of it. So, you know, things are easing there. So it makes it doubly hard, the fact that we've sort of doubled down on, on lockdown again. But, it, you know, needs to be done. One of those things. I feel like these politicians make hate decisions based on, I mean, they're, I'm I'm coming to you from New York, which just signed. Uh, they just legalized recreational marijuana. Hmm. And Congratulations! Well, I mean, you know, it's like it's so stupid anyway. But the re- really, really is our governor Andrew Cuomo. He's a big pothead. <laughs> he's not a big pothead. He's a big fucking toucher. He grabbing everybody. <laughs> he 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 a problem. He a problem. And it's it's all of a sudden I was treating my wife. She, wife my wife says she's not going to legalize marijuana, and I said. Cuomo just legalized marijuana. He's trying to either get some get some uh, you know help from the citizens or like throw something in it. All right, this is all I got. I'm going to do something crazy. But it's very <laughs> clear that like if he was not you know such a toucher and a problem, a this might not have gone on. <laughs> right. Ugh. He's yeah, he's grabbing people when they don't want to, <laughs> and that's a toucher, right? Oh jeez. And he's your governor, did you say? Yeah, uh, he's the yeah. son of the former governor. Neither one, really. I mean, I ain't gonna talk about politics. Oh. Cuomo's a <laughs> look. He 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 he's arrogant, and he likes to tell he likes to tell people that they're wrong. And then when he uh, when it comes down to whether or not he's grabbed someone, he just says, "I didn't realize that I wasn't. I didn't. Whatever. It's so <laughs> stupid. Now I can all smoke pot. That's that's the bottom line. And maybe I should, we should thank him. <laughs> maybe." Maybe. Um, Morocco, then, your week. What have you been up to? Apart from bike riding, which sounds like fun. Yeah, so the weather's been picking up at least this last week, and it's going to rain the next couple days, but then it's going to get nice again. Uh, And I have a really nice bike trail um, that used to be like a railroad um, not far from my shop. And and that'll, Hmm. it's actually like, I think it's something like 50 miles long. Um, And but I, I definitely do not <laughs> ride that whole lane. <laughs> um, but not far from where I'm at, there's kind of like a business center where there's like a, there's a Lowe's and there's a bank and all the banks and restaurants and stuff like that. And and so I popped down there to go get some lunch on a, on a nice Friday afternoon. There's a, there's a park with a nice little vista of Mount Rainier. It's got like a clear shot of it. It's beautiful. It looks like it's like a, the Mount Fuji of the Pacific Northwest. Nice. Um, and so, yeah. And so I went and got some lunch. That was today. Uh, yesterday I, in the mail, actually, I got some mocha made from my friend, friend, Peter Swarzbert. Um, he's my former shop mate over in Connecticut and he's over in Hawaii now and he's making mocha made and he made this nickel and copper mocha made for me that I'm going to use on this next build that I got coming up. Um, I got, uh, digitals back from my knife photos. I sent my knife out to get photographed but i think it might be a little while before i do that again um because apparently the way i wanted it done or at least like the packaging and shipping back was a bit of a pain for uh the photographer and uh (laughs) i don't know if i want to really get into it but it was it was uh it, it stressed me out and it felt like i was being an asshole basically and asking a lot um when i don't think i really was but nonetheless um Um, and uh, I'm trying to think what else. The sword. What What's happening with the sword? Sword. What sword? No, I'm just joking. Uh, uh, the oh, sword. Oh, I have... oh, wink, wink. I was under that, or I was going to ask you if your mokume was made of swarf, swarf steel, <laughs> swarf steel. No. Oh, and <laughs> yeah, update on that. Sorry, Mert. I am an idiot, and I was completely wrong about <laughs> how he makes his tamahagane. I swear to God, he used some sort of uh, scrap 
material. Maybe I saw it as a joke post or something. It was either like Swarf or like Forge Scale off the like from around his power hammer that he was using. But he my, that also might have been a complete joke. So uh, so, but I, last I, I'm episode, gullible and I've totally fell for it. Last episode we were talking about what you do with your Swarf steel, the steel, the steel and the Swarf, and Mareko thought that you 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 know he, that Mertansu was using it to make whatever the hell he was making. And, you know, Tomahawk let's just say the Australians listen to Knife Talk first and when it comes out on Mondays, because right. we all get the emails right out right out of the shoot. This is some bull, you know, this is a fake news bullshit. So they got Knife Talk Down Under is full blast on top of our ass. So, yeah, that was a mistake. Fine. What can you do? You know? I'm I'm not that smart. So. I think you are. I think you're. I think it's fine. I, I think the. I think the Australians get a little itchy. They get a little itchy for. For they get a little itchy, but you no, know, Mert's the best. And look, you know, you swing at ten thousand pitches, and then you hit most of them. You get maybe you might miss one. It's fine. I miss a you lot know? of them. Our but... average is good. Our average is great. <laughs> Your average is excellent. Take you know, it's fine. All right. Well, real quick, regarding the sword, uh, not a lot of progress has been made on that, uh, but this week I'm getting wetty. Wetty? Yeah. <laughs> I, I sounded Let's like get that. Wetty. <laughs> I sounded like that priest from the Princess Bride. We are here. We gavel for love. <laughs> um, the sword, I, I'm going to be grinding out on my broadback, actually. I think I, I've been kind of having some issues trying to figure out how I'm actually going to approach the finish grinding. And because the broadback lays over, it gives you kind of, especially for that length of blade, it's going to give me some nice um, work surface to play with and, and get some work done. And I think it's also going to help keep those bevels a little bit more in line the way I want them to. Um, so I, I finally figure out how I'm going to do that, how I'm going to approach that. And I'm going to hit that on Sunday, I believe. Sunday, Sunday. Nice. That's it. <clears throat> Jeffrey, Jeffrey, let's get Weddy to Wumble. What have you been up to? Well, it's, you know, <laughs> your story kind of dovetails into my story because I actually, and I, can't, I legitimately can't go into it, but I got accepted to a thing. And I'll just keep it at that. And I was accepted to a thing, and I had to send a sample. I sent, I made the sample. <laughs> I'm going to keep a it. A sample listen. of what? A sample of what? I'm, I'm keeping it. I'm ke in his duo. <laughs> <laughs> listen guys listen Make guys sure you got enough liquid nitrogen keep the jokes that. keep the jokes for combat abrasives okay they're gonna need all <laughs> the jokes they can get okay just let me handle this and then we'll talk about combat and that's called radio tease ladies and germs so i got accepted to do a thing and i had to send a sample and i looked at the sample that i was going to send and i said to myself i can do better than that <laughs> so you knocked another one out i knocked another one out and then nice. And then, um, Wait, did and you then, knock it out? You crank it out. I did that. I knocked the first one out. Okay. I knocked the second one out. I cranked the third one out, and I just cranked out the fourth one because Jeez, I'm spent. crazy. And it was really <laughs> one of those things: is is this how you want to represent yourself? Is this this is now like you know moments of enlightenment? This is moments of you know here's your chance for you know mediocre glory. Let's. And it was, I ended up doing five different samples. Oh, geez. It was, oh, you know what? those balls. And thank God, <laughs> and thank God you were, you were, you were, you know, I don't know what you were doing for the last hour, but it actually <laughs> helped me out a lot. And I wanted to thank you because we're an hour later than we normally broadcast. And I ended up redoing something that I was, I said, I got to thank Craig Lockwood for getting drunk and doing something with his family because I'm I'm now I'm on the fifth sample and I'm oh, thrilled. Geez. So thank you very I'm much. Thrilled. Please yeah, don't talk about your samples whilst thanking me. It's it's not good. <laughs> don't it's worry. Not good. Don't listen. Any samples you think that I'm thinking? Yeah, you're right. It's fine. But no, it was it was good. And then funny enough, uh yesterday this is now Friday, yesterday was uh was April Fool's Day. And um, Tony, Thursdays with Tony, Tony comes down to the shop, we do administration stuff, and now I got him so he can work on the computer, do the stuff, and I can do other things, which is the best. I don't have to pace. So, nice. like, I always plan out Thursdays, I have something I can do. I can hand sand, or I can forge, or I can do things that are not quiet, or quiet, or 
So now would be, we're going to be close to the time where we play the combat abrasive steam tr song because the phone rang off the hook over here at Fader Knives. Well, the emails, <laughs> texts. So uh, I got a first yeah. message from Craig saying, uh, combat's going to have some administration problems coming up. I said, what are you talking <laughs> about? I look into the emails, and the subject line from Combat Abrasive says, your order for 7,000 something, something, something is almost complete. I said, okay, I'm about to shit my pants. I Did I order? <laughs> and, then, and, and then I said, okay, oh, it's an April Fool's joke. Combat Abrasives did a, send a mailer to all their listeners saying, you, you know, the, in the subject line, it's you, your order of 7,300 something, something, something is almost ready. So it's a way for you to click, but all of a sudden your, your heart palpitates because, I mean, who's buying $7,000 worth of abrasives? So <laughs> I say, I see the thing, I'm, and, I'm th and I write back to, to Craig, I say, yeah, they're going to they're gonna get their balls broken. When Tony comes in, he gets all the emails too, and I'm working, 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 and all of a sudden, he says, hey, what are you doing buying $7,000 worth of abrasives? <laughs> what do you do? What? Why would you ever? You've never bought $7,000 worth of abrasives. What? You didn't. Like, no, you no, 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 no. $7,700, and you had your 10% discount when I've talked. <laughs> well, I mean, I said, no, no, it's an April Fool's Day joke. He's like, what? What kind of, who does an April Fool's Day joke where you owe money? <laughs> That's like, you know, so... <laughs> So for that ten minutes, I just explain. I said, "Look, dude, it's April Fools. This is the stupidest holiday of all time. People try to do d dumb things. Fine. Well, the the text starts sending to me like, what is going on with combat? Why are they charging me all this? I'm like, re relax, everybody, relax. And then there was a follow up email, <laughs> a panicked follow up email from combat saying, disregard the last email. <laughs> Somebody from the marketing department who's probably now, you know, in the uh, dustpan department. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> I think there's going to be some like, you know, the shoveling the snow department now. Um, they, you know, they said it was a bad joke. It was a bad joke. So I was funny. It is what it is. It is what it is. But this is probably a good time to play. Combat abrasives make the world's best abrasive belts for knife makers available in any size and at unbelievable prices. Go take a look at combatabrasives.com and get 15% off with the promo code KNIFETALK15. Do it now! And, and with that said, they make great belts and products. Yes. They make terrible jokes, <laughs> but they make great products. <laughs> So this is my, I've actually been like, I've been like assigned to do some ball breaking because I got some kind of gnarly emails from some friends of ours. Combat's a great company. Buy their shit. Just relax. And they were trying to do a joke. <laughs> so they're trying to do a April Fool's Day joke. Obviously, you didn't buy $7,000 worth of belts. But with that said, Combat, you got to know your audience. You got some cheap and crazed <laughs> You're cheap and crazed customers that don't, I don't think, I think their wallets are very, very sensitive. These aren't like, you know, Wall Street guys. So just, you Whoa, know. what? Well, I'm just saying these aren't like, I mean, people people worry about their, <laughs> they are using their 10% discount. So they want to make sure that 15. they're getting value. And when you tell them they might have spent $7,000 worth of belts, some of them might not take it very well. And I'm under news, the impression that a lot of them did. <laughs> news just in. News just in. We played that combat um, read then. We asked Brian um, Brian Houseword from um, housemade.us no. to oh, do yeah, some yes. reads for us. Right. And he's literally just sent them through the email. Shall I open the email and listen now? Shall you we might listen? as well. I sent him a... Uh, I sent him a... Uh, I, uh, I sent him a, a uh, direct text saying are we getting these reads or what <laughs> very direct direct <laughs> message let's listen let's listen just come through let's listen to this oh he's queuing himself up no it's not working never mind never mind i'll play it later <laughs> <laughs> i was on the edge of my that seat. was all for nothing <laughs> Unless he's trolling us, he sent us a blank. No, file. no, no, no. He's 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 a good dude. He's a good dude. And he's also on the Maker Network. He's got a show uh, called. We got it. We got it. Okay, go ahead. This is how I warm up. Yeah, yeah. 
la 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 all right here we go here we go is it heat treat or heat treating knife talk is sponsored by even heat the manufacturers of the finest heat treat ovens available to find your next oven go to evenheat-kiln.com fucking smooth that was professional that was fucking amazing what's the next one he's done a few let me keep listening combat abrasives makes the world's best abrasive belts for knife makers available in any size at unbelievable prices go take a look at combatabrasives.com and get 15 percent off with promo code knife talk 15 Fuck. This is turning into us being able to do nothing, and we, we just press play Dude. on Brian. Dude, this go. is so much better than I thought it was going to be. What's the next one? Or should we save it? Or should we just do like a so we do a roulette? So I don't know the- what it is. Yeah, it's all one big file. I don't know what it is. So <laughs> let's let's do it now. It's going to get complicated otherwise. Let's just do it now. <laughs> abrasives makes the world's best. Ab- I just need to say that was complete chance. I haven't heard this before. Brace of belts for the knife maker. Available in any size and at unbelievable prices. Go take a look at combatabrasives.com and get 15% off with promo code KNIFETALK15. Do it now. There, there's nobody better. <laughs> Contact I don't know us why via he's... DM at KNIFETALK. He's just going off on one. He's just doing them all. I know. I sent him to him. You know what? I don't know what the fuck he's doing fucking around with these grinders. <laughs> I swear to God, <laughs> if I was Brian House, I'd sell it all, and I would be a professional voice guy. This is so. This is unbelievable. This is this. This is way better than that fucking guy that you paid. <laughs> and this is free. This is fucking even better. Hell right, it is. <laughs> Brian House is the man. God damn, that's fucking good. Okay, I don't know. I don't think he's done one for this, but it's time for. Hey man, can I ask you a question? <sighs> man, that was smooth too. That was smooth. Okay, this is the bit of the show where we get people to um, DM us questions on Instagram. And if you want to do that, um, you can do that by DMing us at Knife Talk Podcast on Instagram. Um, and we also open up the lines every week as well. So half an hour after we start, so we're, what, seven minutes away, um, we'll open the lines. So if you want to call us live on the show, um, it's very simple. On Instagram, as if you're going to DM us, but in the very top right corner, you will see a little video camera. Um, and if you do that, you come through to me. You could be live on the show. Could be cool. So, the first one we have is from Rogers Custom Knives. Question: um, When sanding for hormones, is there a standard as far as what to sand to? Um, I have sanded uh, to as little as four hundred, and it looked blurry with the hormone. I've sanded to two thousand, and I can barely see the hormone because it's so light in contrast. Is there a trick that you know of to get better contrast with the wispiness of a higher sanded steel? I've never done a hormone. I got nothing. I'm, I'm, I read <laughs> this, this is all and you I thought, record, surely. Now, this is the yeah. time for me to send an email to, <laughs> to Brian thanking him for <laughs> for the reads because I don't I don't fucking I flew around with hormone once. You know, we should get uh, Craig Sims on here. Craig Sims, Greg Sims, Greg God. Sims. I'm terrible. Sorry, Greg. Anyways, <laughs> get him on here to talk hormones because he makes some of the best or gets some of the best hormone results. Um, but from what I understand, I mean, I've done a few hormones myself. I'm still trying to figure it out, honestly. Um, but in my experience, the higher the finish, the better. Um, and then, like, you see guys like uh, J-Ball Knives, uh, uh, Jared down in Florida, he gets some freaking crazy contrast. But some of that is the fact that he's doing a selective um kind of a selective sanding process i don't know how exactly he's doing it um but that's how he's really getting that like really high like uh like i said high contrast dark up along the spine where the clay was covering the blade and then really bright down along the cutting edge um at least that's again that's just my best guess but what i found works decent pretty damn well is um etch the blade take it up to a nice finish high finish at least you know 800 thousand 2000 um etch the blade again like i was talking about i think i was talking about last last week is i just dip the blade in just for a second to make sure it's etching completely evenly because if it is not 
getting an even clean bite across the entire blade, there's some funky little weird spot that's going to show up that where the acid wasn't doing its work. So you, you want to just dip it in there for just a few seconds, take a look at it, um, make sure everything's good. If it is, move forward with maybe another 20, 30 seconds, um, and then bring the knife out, neutralize it, put it, clamp it back up, because you're going to have to pull strokes on it again, like you do with your finishing hand sanding strokes. Uh, not like Jeff when he's sending out samples, you know. And so, um, <laughs> and then actually Combat Abrasives sells a non-woven gray scotch Bright pad, uh, sanding pad. And if you just pull gentle sl strokes over, over your blade with that, that'll help kind of gently clean up the blade the hard area of the blade is the the oxides are going to come off that a lot easier and so that will also help uh to create some of that contrast and because it's such a high finish uh such a such a gentle abrasive it's going to help um highlight some of those wispy aspects kind of the, the ashi of the hamon um if you've if you've actually gotten those but there's a whole uh, Doing hormones is a really, really, really deep rabbit hole that I haven't really spent very much time um, diving into. I've just played around the rim. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Christ. Have mercy. I've got nothing to add. <laughs> nothing to add at all. Um, yeah. Sean Moolenbelt has also asked a question. Um Jeff, do you want to read this one out? Uh, so this past year, I've had two credit providers, Squarespace most recently, drop me because I sell knives. I typically get paid through PayPal, but would also like to offer customers a credit card option. Is there a service that you use that doesn't give you crap about selling knives? Mm. You can still use PayPal. Excuse me? I said you can still yeah. use PayPal. Right. Yeah, I a, mean, he mentioned oh, sorry, Squarespace. Sorry, sorry. You mentioned Squarespace there as being um, the issue. It probably is. It's probably Stripe in the background because Squarespace mm. um, use, uses Stripe to handle credit card payments, um, and uh, Shopify can as well. Um, I, I mean, I've used Shopify and Squarespace for, for years and never had an issue um, uh, selling knives. So I'm not quite sure what the issue is, but um, check with. Um, yeah, log into your Stripe account and see if there's any issues with that. That sounds as if that probably is the issue rather than being Squarespace or Spotify or, or sorry, Shopify or whatever you're using. Sure. Hmm. I, I will say it with PayPal, you can, as, as like as the maker, if you have a PayPal account, you can create an invoice and send that through email to whoever needs to pay you. Um, if they have an account, they can just do, send you money however. But if they don't have an account they can still pay that invoice with a credit card. They, it's just that, you know, PayPal takes their whatever, like three and a half percent or something like that. Um, yeah. And that's just, that's just part of doing business, honestly. I got nothing to add other than I, I, I know that other people have been having problems. I know that uh, Mert Tansy has been having problems too. I know a lot of people don't like PayPal. I personally, Tony and I, curse paypal we believe yeah. that paypal owes us many fruit baskets because they don't oh, they take such we've a hit got a call we've got a call <laughs> what your hey, name man. You... i recognize that voice hey man can i ask you a question dude brian house is in the house you fucking <laughs> did a gr incredible job i just want to um actually ask jeff Fader, a very serious question, something that I need some detail on. Go ahead. Go for it. I was hoping you could give us a detailed analysis of your belt progression. Me? Yeah. No, every single belt you use from top to bottom. Why me? I'll tell you. I use. Because you, I go you hate that question. That's why. Oh, okay. Good. Because you're, you, you, you just, <laughs> I was just like, God, Jesus Christ. That is, I fucking hate that question. <laughs> I'm 36, 80, 220, and then uh, maybe a Gator Belt here and there, and then Scotch Bright, uh, all four, and then I, I love I go that you answered it. I love that you actually and then, answered it. I thought you were going to hang up on me for sure. No, no, no doubt, dude. About dude. It. I thought Craig was going to hit that fucking button. No, after, I, I'm over that. I'm over that this week. I'm over that this week. He's half what the bag. What are you up to today, Brian? Right. What are you up to? Uh, I just finished work. I just finished the. Re 
<laughs> oh, oh, you're a demon. The demon is back. The demon is back. God damn it. And he's gone. <laughs> you are you are a Thanks demon. Thanks for calling, Brian. Wow. Jesus. Brian, <laughs> yeah, seriously, you, Brian. Brian. You did an awesome job on those reads. We're going to have them all queued yes. up next week. We will do. We God will do. Damn. We, we, we were talking about, yeah, uh, uh, payment providers. Yeah, pay, I'm not the biggest fan of PayPal. Um, I, I love Stripe. Um, Stripe is brilliant, and you can plug it into most, uh, whether you're using, you know, you've rolled your own website or whether you're using a Squarespace or whatever it is. It's all good. But, yeah, log into your Stripe account and just see, because quite often they may just be missing a document or something like that, you know. The, you know, but things always change. So it's worth <laughs> I got a text from Brian. Sorry. <laughs> he just texted, I love it, assholes. <laughs> That's silky sweet. <sighs> mm. uh, who wants to take the next yeah, one from I got Josh? It. This, yeah, this next one is from Josh Wilcox. It says, hey, sexies, I've been seeing guys bashing the – uh, bashing the resin hybrid handle material saying, did we do this one last week? Anyway, no. sorry. No, okay. no. Bashing the resin hybrid handle material saying <clears throat> they break down over time and if mixed with wood, uh, they will fail because of the difference in expansion rates. Any insight? Ah, I mean, there's massive varying quality. If you're buying them rather than making them yourself, um, a massive, uh, you know, variety in quality. Um, but if you're making them yourself, just stabilize the wood first, and you know, first, and don't cheap out on the resins. I... Um, get decent resins, stabilize your wood, and you'll be good. Um, the big question is, do you still want to be doing that in 2021? <laughs> uh, that's all I've got. What does that mean? Well, we made the joke last week. And it's it's the CrossFit of handles, oh, yeah. you know. It's, it's sort of overdone, and you see, you yeah. see it a lot. And I think maybe two or three years ago, they were the, they were the hot shit. Um, but uh, I don't know. I'm over them. I've seen a lot. Of I'm them. over yeah. them. I'm over them. But I do wonder. I do wonder yeah. because I rub my hands on some of the samples I have. Oh, there you go. We've got a call. <laughs> We've got a call. <laughs> Who's on the line? How can we help? Hey, Craig, this is Jesse Killian with Marlboro Handcraft. How are you? Yes. We're good. We're good. What are you up to? No, nothing much. I'm calling to ask a question about making sand mine. So today I tried to make stainless sand mine for the first time, and let's just say it didn't go well. Um, <laughs> I'm curious if my issues were the type of stainless that I used for my cladding, um, I used 304. Then the other question I had was if my prep was wrong. I'm not sure. I sandblasted everything instead of grinding it, and I'm not sure if that might have had uh, an effect negatively. Miraculous so. is all you. Uh, how did you put? How did you prep the billet? I mean, other than sandblasting, uh, not was... just the surfaces, but like, how did you weld everything together? Did you did you weld up all the seams? Did you wrap the whole thing in like uh, stainless uh, heat treating foil? Like, what did you do? Um, everything, the all the seams were fused, TIG welded together. Okay. Um, and that was it. Okay. And then, <laughs> and what was your, what what was your core material? 1084. 1084. Okay. So f you said it was 304 stainless? Yeah. And I, I had a bunch of people tell me I was an idiot for doing that. So I'm yes. not sure if that was part, you know. No, I got zero forge weld. The whole thing basically fell apart when I cut the welds off. Yeah. So 304 has a shit ton of nickel in it. Um, and it does not want to play nicely. Um you are you probably have better results with like four ten for cladding. Okay. Uh, what temperature were you welding at, or trying to weld at? Ye yellow. Yellow. It was okay. the yellow heat. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, that sounds like it should, probably should have been enough heat. How long did you let it soak once it came up to temperature? Yeah. Um. I would say ten minutes. Okay. Somewhere and, in there. Sure. And then what were you using to like compress the material? Were you doing it by hand, pressed, hammer? <laughs> by hand. 
Yeah, that's pro- probably another issue right there too, um, because like, I, 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 we're gonna bring. I'm gonna bring up Greg Sims again, and also makers like Bill Burke and and Jeremy Spake. They all use uh, high powered rolling machines to kind of get that force, because you really got to get a nice even force across that billet as you are kind of compressing it and trying to encourage those forge welds. And so they're putting it through rolling mills. Yeah. You can do the same thing under a press and a power hammer, um, but a rolling mill is really going to get those surfaces in contact to each other so they stick nicely. There you go. Look at that. Okay, so by hand, I'm probably up a bit of shit creek, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be, <laughs> I mean, it's it really going to be really hard <laughs> to do by hand. How? What was the size of your billet? <laughs> Um, two and a half by six, Holy by shit. a quarter inch, a little over a quarter inch. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that was a, biting off a little bit more than your hammer could chew, for sure. Okay. okay. So cut that down. But the sandblasting shouldn't have been the issue, right? I mean, sandblasting. Kind of more my concern. Did you, did you wash the steel after you sandblasted it? Hmm. That's a no. Like acetone. No, like soap and water and maybe a Scotch Bright pad. No, I did not. Because that might that, that any might have been. any of that abrasive, whatever mm-hmm. whatever your medium is, even in the, an ultra fine powder, mm-hmm. could still be on the surface of that material, and that's not going to help your welds. Okay. There we go. All right, that, there that points me in a good direction. Thanks, guys. Wait, I, wait, uh, wait, whoa, 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 whoa! What? I've got a question for you. That's oh, a- you're gonna now. You're gonna try and do that thing. <laughs> That's a, yeah. no, 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 no. That's a, that's a, the, you, you keep, these guys. I was going to say that's that. That's a fine-looking beard you've got. Is that is that oil or, oil or wax you use on that? No, I, I just took a shower not that long. <sighs> you fucking <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, you yeah, got yeah, him yeah. so hard. You fucking that, holy shit. You you, you only <laughs> lost. You almost lost him. And then you Almost. reeled them back in, Blockwood. <laughs> You're a fucking demon. Uh, it was a fine-looking beard. I've got to tell you, it's a fine-looking beard. Uh, right. Where were we? Um, Josh was talking about hybrid handles um, and um, some of them failing. Um, and I, I think we covered it really, didn't we? If it's stabilized wood and it's a decent um, epoxy, you should well, be I think, good. I what think Jeff was saying, he would be skeptical about it, and I agree. I honestly, I've gotten professionally, I picked up stuff that I've, I bought three years ago. And when I run my hand over it, the wood is a little bit proud of the resin. Yeah. Right. And, okay. I, and I'm not going to say it, but it makes me nervous. So I would, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm telling you what, wood in the next couple of years, wood will be out of my shop completely. All of it. All of it. All no, of it. Not, no wood. You knocked five out today, so there's no more wood in your shop today. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That you yes. Correct. But I don't know, man. I will say though yes, if, if that you was a great answer. That... Oh sorry. Baraka, you 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 uh you were that was excellent. That was that was a first rate call and call in situation excellent thank you i will say with that shock wood if you laminate it to some sort of like even a thin piece of g10 that might help kind of reinforce or stabilize that handle material so if it does for whatever reason like that wood expands because it's picking up moisture and kind of breaks away from the uh, kind of like that acrylic resin then you still have that bond um to that underlying uh, layer that will help keep it together i think It'll but help. it's not yeah. it's yeah. not going to prevent the wood from expanding if it, they're even just a hair you know or right. possibly the resin from shrinking one or the other I yeah. don't know. okay time for this knife talk is sponsored by even heat the manufacturers of the finest heat treating ovens available find your next oven at evenheat-kiln.com to the chopper we're going to change these out next week. I'm sure Brian's is far better. But yeah, even heat, they're the ones to go for. It's the ones we all use. It's the one all the professionals use. They're the best ovens you can get. But we can get you a discount. Of course we can. 
if you go to knifetalk.net forward slash heat, that'll take you to Soul Ceramics webpage, and they're a distributor of Even Heats. Um, and it'll automatically apply a $75 discount and give you free shipping in the US. And you can spec out your Even Heat there. So whether you want the, the LB model or the, the you know the, the tap controller or whatever you want, you can spec it out, get your $75 off and free shipping. Can't ask for better than that. Okay. Perfect timing. We've got a call. Perfect. Ah, hello. Who's... I'm Leo from Finite Forge in London. Hello, Leo. That's a very posh action to have there, Leo. Why, thank you. I made it myself by listening to way too much Radio 4 when I was young. Oh, wowzers. Okay. <laughs> How could we help you, Leo? <laughs> I have a question, a hot take, and a humorous observation about knife making. Oh. Which one would you like? All of them. Let, <laughs> with that let's voice go yours? with the humorous observation first. I have realized knife making is an awful lot like being a male porn star. Everyone does it for the first time and thinks, I would love to do this for a living. And then you realize it's a lot more work than you actually realize. It's doing it every single day takes an awful lot of the magic out of it. And there's an awful lot of competition from other guys out there who have also had the same idea as you. And the pay is absolutely awful. That's a fucking hum- that's a fucking humorous <laughs> observation. <laughs> right, you, you you come up with three, you struck out with the first one. No, I thought that was a it's all, the delivery oh was perfect. It's all down to this whether you get to do the third. Okay, so so what if we got this time? A hot take, a hot take. No, he's got he's got three hot things. Take. He's only done one. Exactly, but the first one was terrible. I thought come it was on. pretty good. So it, if if the second one isn't too good, we don't get to hear the third. That's the rule. <sighs> okay. All right. Leo, just before Hot you thing. start, Leo, Mareko and I don't have a button around. We have nothing. <laughs> this is nothing to do with us. Lockwood's got his fingers on the keys and his dick on the space bar. We have nothing to do with this. I fully support Craig's choices. <laughs> Bring the heat. Give it your best I shot. Know I mean. Your best shot, Leo. Hot take. Knife making, not an art. I'm not mad at that. I, you let him go to the third one. Do you. Not... I'm sort of with you. <laughs> I'm sort of with you there. Yeah. <laughs> Leo's the Leo's our most. He's you know he, maybe maybe we need to have Leo do some voiceover too. Maybe we could have like an international reads too. <laughs> Who'd have thought we'd oh? have such an eloquent listener? I'm telling you, man, it's great. Come on, Leo. What's your third thing? All right. Where was I? Question. <laughs> what happened? So that segment of your show where you guys used to cook things and then post pictures of it on Instagram, on Instagram, and we would vote on it. We couldn't trust the voter because they were clearly voting for um, sometimes the worst food. Let's face it. So yeah, we <laughs> have to let that go because it was so much effort. And I, I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but there was something going on there. I'm Leo, not didn't get to the bottom. Leo, of it. it was it was just too much. It was too much. However. You, you're uh, you're right, but at the same time, it's just like, what is this food talk or knife talk? What are we going to do here? <laughs> you know, Leo, has, has well, any, anybody told you you look a little bit like Doug Markaida? I don't think I've had that. You you are you are legitimately. <laughs> you're never. It's going to take. A, it's going to take a. God damn it, man! We're never going to get callers because they're going to think that you're trying to wax them all the time. <laughs> It's the only fun I get all week. <laughs> this, uh, is, yeah, this is like, they're not going to fall. There are two more episodes and they're not going to fall for it. You're, you're like God we'll smiting we'll see. bad people. He's, he's just, he's just oh, unbelievable. I Do like we Leo. have any hot takes this week? You know what? You know what the funny thing is? is we do have some hot takes. Uh, just a couple. I think because, oh no, we have a, we have a lot. We didn't do the hot takes last week, right? I, oh, I, I think remember. you. I think you had cut them all out. Right. Okay. But uh, do you know what we can do? We could do a product review. We haven't done. One I do long, have hot takes though. But whatever you want. Okay. Give us a couple of hot takes, and we'll do a product review. Okay. Uh, um. Uh, Noah Custom Knives says, "Here's a hot take: Makers that complain about the algorithm are uniboobs that don't know how their market works." Uh. Uniboobs. That must have been one of your words. Uh, Came and Knives says, here's a hot take. Belt belt grinder finishes are harder to make than hand rub sanded finishes. I think that's a pretty good hot take. Mm. 
Yeah, you'll get people talking that one. Uh, Brendan Muren says, uh, "Here's the take. Here's the take of the year. Lawns are fucking stupid. <laughs> they, they crowd out Agreed. local flora and take on an ungodly amount of energy to maintain biodiverse fields, and they're not cooler, and they're actively killing us." That's a, Brendan, uh, that may, okay. that's a bit strong, but uh, yeah, I do agree that a waste of time. Baltic Blade says, here's a hot take. Changing the time of Knife Talk, the Knife Talk recording was the best decision. Changes the dynamics a lot. You are dynamite, guys. And then uh, I have a few more, but uh, Bear Valley Forge just writes, uh, here's a hot take. Thick pizza is better than thin pizza, and the cheese belongs under and over the toppings. I told him. I told him he must be. I wrote to him, "You must be from Mars," and he says, "Well, I am from California." I'm like, "Yeah, well, there you go." From well, fuck California. Uh, I, robot I agree with the under over. I always put. But do you agree with thicker is better than thin? Oh no. Ah, there you go. I <laughs> don't. I can't believe when you were in Connecticut, you never went to Frank Pepe's. That's you, the first thing I told you when that, I met you. You're obsessed with that clam pie, dude. <laughs> I mean, you said it like that. I mean, it's like, you know. I mean, <laughs> yeah, of course I am. I mean, I mean, that say it like that. It's like, white sauce you know, since, I was a, since I was a child, since puberty. Yeah. I mean, what can I say? I mean, Jesus. All, all up in them, all up in them mouth. I mean, yeah. Oh, I mean, you know. We need to change well, the it's subject. A lifelong, it's a lifelong pursuit, Morocco. I have to tell you. Of course I'm obsessed. <laughs> Right. Okay. We the three of us have had a big box delivered over the last um, the last week or so. Speaking of which, <laughs> speaking of clown <laughs> pie, we had a large box God. which we opened and um, amazing clamps. So it's clamps, um, we... not clams. <laughs> yeah, clamps. Tighten clamps. up, Lockwood. You got to tighten up. So um, we mentioned them in the past about these clamps where you don't get that sort of um, twist in force to it. And they're called can't twist clamps. So with a K, can't twist. Um, and they're, they're, all, they're all metal, made of metal. And they, yeah, basically they have a, a screw on the back, um, which brings the jaws of the clamp together without that sort of tw well, twist in action, I suppose. They very kindly sent us a shitload each, loads, and you know they laser our logos on them. They they look incredible. Um, have you guys had to had a chance to use yours yet? Yes. And what do you think? I love them. I'll tell you why. Because I've used them now to clamp some of my uh, kind of like color lab scales together. Hmm. I love it. I love I love the fact that that there's not like a a thing that twists. I like the fact that. When the two parts of the clamp touch your materials, it just tightens down. There's no twisting. I used yeah. it when I was drilling with my drill press. I loved it there. And I actually was using it to on my, one of my sanding jigs to hold the knife down to the sanding deck. I love these. Now, they make a lot of different variations. A lot. I looked on the website. So, the, yeah, magnetics.com is the website. And it's they, yeah, they've got a list in, haven't they, of all the different sizes? And there's literally hundreds of combinations you could you could order. I I think that the most versatile ones are probably the ones with the copper uh, teeth. I think you call them. Jaws. Yeah, yeah. Because they don't mark, and if you're a welder, they're great for you know. If you were welding, I, they sent us some monster ones that I'm going to use as welding clamps. Mm. There was one that I wouldn't do the ones with the soft uh, pads just because I may or may not have broken them off. But <laughs> but I cannot tell you how great these clamps I love these clamps. I'm thrilled. Yeah. I wish I had more. They're cool. They look the shit, too. They look oh, like they're, big they're dynamite. Things. They're dynamite they're clamps. Awesome. Well built. Um, yeah. And I, I mean, I've got one on my drill press just to get things down quickly and you know sometimes if you're clamping down on a drill press sometimes you line everything up then you use the clamp and it twists everything out of the way again and this Ugh. just doesn't do that do that yeah. at all it's great so yeah can't twist clamps um we can get you a 10 percent discount too so if you use knife talk 10 at magnetics.com um you can get that discount so yeah head on over have a look at them because they're a different way of looking at clamping i suppose and you know I've I've gone out and I bought like shitloads of those really cheap ones and they get full of glue because you're twisting and all the glue comes out and all the rest of it and I keep buying new ones and it's, it's just no good. Invest a little bit in really good clamps and the can't twist clamps are are the shit. 
really are. Okay, shall we do some more questions? Yeah. Baltic Blades says, do you exercise after work? That's, that's quite a personal question there. <laughs> do you exercise after work as knife making is taxing on the body? And do you find any time for exercise, like, for example, neck exercises, helping you in this profession? Um, Morocco, I think you do, actually, don't you? You're forging a lot. I think you've got some warm-up exercises, haven't you? Yeah, I, I do some kind of like with my hammers. I do uh, Indian Indian club training. Have you ever guys ever seen that where basically like you, you hold – it's like a weighted club. It looks like a bowling pin, like the traditional technique. And this is like from the – like 40 like 20s 30s 40s people have been doing this these training techniques um but i do that with my hammer and i just kind of like twist it over side to side and kind of around like to warm up and do big arm circles to warm up my shoulders and stuff like that um in the mornings i do like just some very basic like yoga stretches just to like get movement into my body just be, you know before i i really start the day um, I find that when I'm, especially when I'm consistent with that and I do it first thing after waking up, um, my back feels incredible. And if I can do it a second time, and it only takes like maybe five minutes. Um, if I can do it in the middle of the day too, that really helps a lot as well. And then bicycle rides in the just middle of the day sorry. are awesome. Just a sec, Loreco, sorry. We've got a caller. How dare you? What, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hey, my name is Nate Zimmerman. I'm calling from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yeah, he's Nate. back. <laughs> How can we help you? It's okay. <laughs> Just want to call in and say hi to the boys. Nate's Hope you're all doing well. The pride yep. of the pride of Milwaukee. Nate's the man. <laughs> Nate, if you're proud of me, you're the only one at this point. So, you know. <laughs> you, hey, you and Isaiah holding it down in Wisconsin. You're the best. Yeah, I mean, putting me on the same level as him is very, very kind of you. He, uh, Isaiah pumps out some of the best work around, that's for sure. Good dude. Two good dudes from Wisconsin. What can we help you with, Nate? Yeah. Uh, well, I wanted to call in and ask what your guys' top three favorite shop snacks are. I think it's a very important part. We spend so much time in our workshops, and having a good snack uh assortment is a very very important thing to keep you guys comfortable you know uh and i mind list it up but uh you know i want to hear you guys too nice um Morocco, what have you got shop snacks yeah i like tea in the middle of the day i've been drinking earl gray lately bergamot oil in it mm -hmm. mm. and then uh i like kettle nice. chips uh, and lately the kettle brand kettle chips have been doing all kinds of crazy flavors. And I, lately I got like the jalapeno, uh, wait, habanero lime, truffle, sea salt, Parmesan garlic, and I can't remember the other one. Jeez. Um, and other than that, I just also just keeping water handy. I like, I, I'm not very good about drinking water. So I have these one gallon jugs all over the shop. So when I see one, I, I make myself stop and take a drink off of it because otherwise I'm just going to keep going and completely forget this the swarf in them and there's yeah there's all yeah, exactly. grinding dust and shit in them it's yeah. mostly mustache swarf <laughs> yeah uh jeff <laughs> jeff i imagine you're pretty disciplined what what are you eating there's the no days? eating in the shop <laughs> no, fun. No, fun. no fucking <laughs> dude i listen i i have i don't i do not eat i do not i don't fucking relax in the shop i i don't believe in it i don't want to be comfortable in here i want to fucking be here to work just I don't. I don't like to snack. To knock a few out, right? <laughs> I don't like to snack, Nate. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm like. I'm down to. I'm, You're fucking crazy, dude. I don't know, man. I, I'm <laughs> Somebody should get you checked out or something. That's not right. I'm down to. Man, I got a dartboard. I got a Tekken no, machine. Dude. I got. You're, like, you're playing. Everything in the shop. Ugh, I can't do. I need discipline. I need discipline. I don't. I'm down to one coffee. Oh, one man. cup of coffee a day. I'm drinking now only fucking <laughs> water. All I'm looking, I get one Perrier a, a day, and I'm looking forward to that one Perrier. And there's no goddamn Jeff, snacks. Are you, are okay, you no goddamn snacks. Have some <laughs> Telling you, Jeff. God. Are you recording from New York or from Moscow? I'm listen. It sounds like I'm, you're in I'm some getting, fucking like super stringent <laughs> communist country. One coffee. I'm getting one listen Perrier. To me, listen to me. No food. Listen to me. No bathroom no booze. breaks. No booze for three months. I'm getting ready for a big checkup. 
at the in in May, and I'm gonna get the hook. Oh. So I want to make sure that my shit. I want to make sure that when the guy gives me the hook afterwards, he's gonna say you are clean as a whistle. <laughs> I want. Is that why you've been purging your body of all your natural juices? To <laughs> yeah, that's Is right. That that's that right. Mean? I am fucking. Natural juices. I want. I want my cholesterol to be good. I want my asshole to be fine. I want no problems. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm clean as a whistle, baby. Oh jeez. Yeah, yeah. No snacks. <laughs> Shit. No snacks. No fucking My snacks. God. But My if God. I were to have snacks. I, w- I wonder what kind of I wonder what kind of snacks your proctologist keeps in his office. <laughs> you would wonder. <laughs> Molly Listen, I, I, you never know. Yeah, you never know. You never know. I wonder what it, that, that's funny. Uh if I were to have snacks, I would probably like beef jerky. If I were to have snacks, I like beef jerky. Beef jerky. Nice. Okay. The quality choice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, raisins. I keep a lot of raisins oh, around. Um, the worst. Sweets. Yeah. The worst snack of all time. Always good. If Always I'll... good. That's the worst <laughs> snack of all time. Regular. Fucking raisins. Gotta stay regular. But also, um, <laughs> you guys probably don't have them. Their little thing is called scampi fries. And um, they they have been like in the in pubs in the in the UK. They're these little like I think they're like deep fried like little pillows, but they taste of scampi. Yeah, which like is shrimp really weird, scampi. But, um, you can like get them at the Asian markets yeah, yeah, around like, here. Yeah, we, yeah, and lemon. So scampi and lemon, they're and so they're good. really sort of acidic and they're really. <laughs> so yeah, those. You guys all Nate, have it too w- easy. What's, what's your favorite uh, snack in the shop? Uh, so I got a couple. The the few I really like to do one is <laughs> every <laughs> Jesus Christ. you are a fucking demon you're a, we had a good caller we had good chemistry and you fucking gave him the hook <laughs> oh man God Jeff I'm amazed no no fun I, at all in the shop I don't want all I business. also don't want like I just don't want to I feel like if I get too sit down and chill out the time i don't have much time here so like i want to make sure i'm as efficient as possible so i have you know yeah i don't want to have fun nate's trying to ring back (laughs) five times now (laughs) Well, (laughs) for the ones who know safety isn't a catchphrase it's a culture and the ones who help make sure everyone makes it home safe for the safety minded who watch everyone's backs Granger offers supplies and solutions for every industry, as well as safety assessments and training to keep your facilities safe and your people safer. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Have you been wanting to lose weight and get healthy? Now is the perfect time to start Nutrisystem. Enjoy your favorite foods made healthier, delivered free to your door. Right now, you can get uniquely yours ultimate our most complete foolproof plan at an amazing price. Order today and save 50% plus get an extra $40 off. Go to Nutrisystem.com slash save and discover what millions of people already know. Nutrisystem works. Limitations apply. See website for full offer details. He's had his opportunity. Had the opportunity. Okay, he's he's trying to get He wants to kill you now. Bald man, knife and tool has sent in a question. Uh, Craig Morocco and Mr. Fader. I have a question for you guys about sheaths. Um, I've been making leather sheaths with my knives, but absolutely dread sheath making after I complete each knife for two reasons. First, they take me forever to complete. And second, I feel like my beginner level leather working skills make an underwhelming first impression when a customer receives a knife. Um, I have bought custom knives before and they come without a sheath and personally find it annoying. Um, <laughs> Sorry, we're getting a million one and one missed calls here from uh, Nate. We've got a new caller. Who's on the line and how can we help you? Hi, guys. Uh, it's Steve from Moonshine My Works. Um, Hi, Steve. How the devil are you? And also, I've got to say, congratulations on the Six Nations. Thank you. The first person to say it. Thank you so much. Thank you. We were, yeah, we were a little disappointed how it finished, but, you know, champions. Yeah. You know, can't complain. Yeah. Can't complain. Um, so what's going yes, on? Uh, How can we help you? I, well, I, I was talking to uh, some people recently about uh, the handles and the knife, uh, the colours that Jeff's using at the moment. And um, 
And I know with a lot of knife makers, they have a tendency to just use uh, just wood or quite simple handle material. Uh, and I just wondered if Jeff had any kind of, or in fact, any of you guys had any kind of advice on people wanting to experiment a little bit more on how people can gain that kind of confidence to, to play around with colors and materials a little bit. Jeff, you're the, you're the man with the color lab. I'm not telling anybody anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I Fuck think you them. just got to go Fuck for them it. All. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that, you know, I know you were on Axe and Iron Podcast, and I appreciate the kind words that you said. I also know that Roy Scott had opinions. <laughs> Roy Scott, I'll tell you what. Roy Scott's the best, but it's like, oh, you got to be. He says, my only thing is, is it's asymmetrical, and my OCD gets, <laughs> like, fucking Roy, just make your axe handles and relax. I mean, Jesus Christ. Don't worry about it. It's not for you. <laughs> I no, he's the best. It's that's a great show, by the way. But you know, don't worry about it, Roy. You're all right. Yeah. I think that you got to, you know, part of it for me is like I'm fool. I've been fooling around with color, layered colors, but also thicknesses. So for since I started, I was using different thicknesses, and it's that's part of it too. Like if you really want to have just a tran, you know, fooling around with colors, but fooling around with thicknesses helps develop. You're what you're trying to do. So I've been fooling around with that a lot, and it's just something that I, you know, I'm trying to separate myself out because, you know, let's face it, because everyone's got to do something. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think I, th I might right now. My job is to make mistakes and to allow myself to be spontaneous and try to push me push myself back to when I was making sculpture and making very. D dramatic decisions at the moment not thinking ahead of time so it's been fun yeah oh. i think there's a lot of sort of composite materials which are used elsewhere in different industries as well that it could be quite interesting to play with for knives um you know they're being made yeah. for strength and to resist you know the pressure and, and temperatures and oils and waters all that, all that kind of thing so yeah i think there's lots of materials out there that people aren't using um and also lots of now recycled materials lots of materials have been recycled into you know a material you can use for knives um so, so there's, there's plenty of options out there that you know that aren't wood and to be honest with you i haven't done a chef knife out of wood for probably a couple of years um lots of yeah. lots of restaurants still want table knives made of wood because they've got that sort of warmth quality to them when you're holding them um but uh, yeah with regards to chef knives I, I'm, I'm using anything but wood um because there's that you know the whole having to stabilize it um if they want more than one it's trying to find stuff that's going to match well um and yeah it, 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 you know it can be a fair bit of work but um you know, even even like G10, which is, you know, pe some people hate G10. They say it's just really cheap looking. Um, but, you know, if you look at what, what Jeff is doing with the colors, really sort of, yeah. you know, accentuates everything ab ab about the, the knife and making something really interesting. And um, just using, you know, contrast. I mean, the, the G10 knives that I've recently done quite a big batch with, they, they were just black G10, which I love using now, and then just using like a really contrasting, like, bright green or a bright orange is like a thick thick liner so that yeah there's plenty of other things you can use apart from wood um I, I, but, but saying that Morocco, you use almost almost extensively wood isn't it yeah i basically i mean and it's because of that warm feeling that instead of you know versus uh especially like any kind of metals or synthetics and there's nothing wrong with that um but I, I'm always looking for kind of like a, a natural warmer feeling and a warmer tone, I guess, to the overall kind of feel of my work. Yeah. yeah. One of the things that I, I used to hate about G10, but now I love, is that the colors are pretty standard. Like there's not a lot of tonal changes in like the blues, the royal blues, royal blue, toxic greens, toxic green. And there's very, sometimes there'll be a slight variation i used to hate that but now especially when i buy dowels like g10 dowels the colors are matching you know based on you know all most of it so it's like i kind of like that i kind of like um that there is some you know 
the similar, you know, very close colors. I, I like that, but yeah. I wish that there, I wish that there were more um, tonal changes of G10. Hmm. Yeah, and what's your problem with wood, Steve? No problem at all. I love wood. It was just. Well, we'll stop you there. We'll stop you there. Oh, (laughs) man. Steve Steve loves wood. There we go. Steve has the quote of the... This is uh... the third podcast he's been on in this this whole week. That's like a record. We didn't even give him the playoff music. We just stopped him on He Loves Wood. He's the man. That's that's good. And as as Chris Cash (laughs) says, wood is for the fireplace. (laughs) Really? Is that what he gets up to? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You are a demon today. You really okay, are. Okay, do we have any unsolicited advice? We do have unsolicited. Do we have any bit? We have any uh, breaks we had to do or uh, reads or? Well, I tell you, let's talk. We, we were just talking about um, G10 and handle materials. Um, and one thing you're going to need for good handle materials is a good abrasive for hand sanding. Um, and we all use Indasa Rhino Wet um, simply because it's the best stuff. Oh, geez, just a second. <laughs> Not in a read. <laughs> There we go. Um, sorry, yeah. So in Dasa Rhino Wet, um, simply because it's the best stuff. Um, it saves you time, and if it's saving you time, it's definitely saving you money. So yeah, in Dasa Rhino Wet is the best stuff for hand sanding, and we can get it cheaper for you too. If you go to Texas Fire Supply and use Knife Talk Ten, you'll get ten percent off. Not just your Rhino Wet, but anything else that they sell. And they've got a whole section on the website there for knife makers and blade makers. Um, so anything that you put into your basket, you can get ten percent off by using Knife Talk Ten. There we go. And just before we get into unsolicited advice, when you hang up on people, they immediately contact me. So I know. <laughs> I just want to tell you that I get the, the HR department through straight up. Oh, dude, I am totally the <laughs> HR. I'm the complaint department. So Steve writes, Steve Steve House just texts me, "Fucking Craig, I didn't even get to, a chance to ask what grinders you should use." So he was going to get us right into Broadback, and then this one was better. I was holding my tongue. Nate, when you hung up on Nate, he wrote, he wrote, "Oh, I got disconnected from Instagram. That fucking sucks." <laughs> He didn't realize that you'd hung up on him. And then I said, oh. Yeah, he still didn't know you'd hung up on him. So. That's why you tried ringing about nine times after. Yeah, he thought yeah. he thought we were having chemistry. He didn't realize that you're a demon. So he blames Instagram. Yeah, blame Instagram. That's that's the way it is. Yeah. Now that Craig is down to one podcast a week, he's going to – all his venom is going to go into this one. <laughs> <laughs> All the juice in one. Yeah. Mm. Yes, we didn't mention that. So I, I, I recorded my last XYZ podcast with, with Aaron, Aaron Goff, um, who I've been doing the podcast with. I think we've done sort of about 20 episodes. Um, but yeah, I was just finding like, the time and just extra stress on top of a lot at the moment. So Aaron's going to continue with the, with the podcast. Um, and we've been chatting and, and, and he's got a couple of ideas for hosts and guests and things. So it's, yeah, if, if you're into any sort of um, CNC or machining um, or just sort of geeky stuff in general, really, um, it's a really good show. And I can say that now as I'm not the host, so I'm allowed to say it's a good show. So yeah, go follow um, XYZ podcast. Um, Aaron's doing a really good job. You handled that exit excellently you handle that really really well that last episode you did a great job that was really like not heartwarming but you did a great job thank you thank you very much so if you have any unsolicited advice or people sometimes people say you know hey you know what you should do or i know you didn't ask but send them in to knife talk podcast dm it to us the funny thing i'm noticing is now that people are starting to call they're less likely to we're getting less DMs because they're just people are saying, well, I'm just going to call in because I'm sure you got like yeah, a, save them up. Yeah. a million ones. So I here's the episode. This is the part where you send us your unsolicited advice. The first one comes from our friend Jackie Awesome, wife to the current joke leader Brian uh, <laughs> Adam Bill Sharp. Jackie says, you all know what you should do when someone interrupts reading a question. They should get a penalty for being rude to Mareko. Like a random pop quiz question that they have to get right or they get buzzed off the call. I like it's it. Not a bad idea. I like it. Like random yeah, like quiz. That. You you know, you do a random yeah. quiz on people. Or also, if they <laughs> ring up in the middle of us doing a question, they need to answer that question too. Let's get another opinion on it. I that. think it's great. I think it's great. Jackie Austin did a great job. She should call in. Jackie's great. Also, old school uh, friend of the show was interviewed by Craig in the beginning stages of Knife Talk. Yes, a long time ago. Yeah, years ago now. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so Jackie, Ma Jamie Mackey says, I know you didn't ask. Um, I know you didn't ask, but what you should do is cut out a silhouette of your handle in a square in a square of card stock. Then you can place the handle shape hole over the wood block to get the best figuring for the handle. Do you understand what that means? Yeah, he's stealing no. Nick, so he's... Nick Wheeler's idea for his own. Well, Jamie, I didn't... So is he making you know. a... Sorry, is he making a fake hand? No, and not a hand. Around? He's making the silhouette of the knife handle profile. So the... Oh, so for self <laughs> What did you think? <laughs> what, what did you think he meant? <laughs> I was getting rid of phone calls and stuff, and I, I overheard a little bit of what you said. I wasn't paying too much attention to you, to be honest. Fine. No, Jeff. listen. This is now a whole new show <laughs> where there are a lot of moving parts, and we have to adjust. I understand. So uh, it's, okay. it's basically you c take a piece of cardstock, cut out the inside of the handle. You cut the profile out, and then you can place that silhouette template over the wood so you can identify exactly the figuring that you want of the wood. I did okay. see that as a Nick Wheeler move. Um, okay. I think my move is better. Draw around your hand, cut out your hand of card, <laughs> and then you can wrap that around the handle exactly where it would be. I like that. I like that idea. You heard funny. <laughs> what if... <laughs> No ex no more Ryan Goff and Ryan Ryan Goff. Never mind. Aaron Aaron Goff joke. All right. Um Stan Stanley says, I know you didn't ask, but any listener wanting to ask a question should go through the back catalog of episodes to see if the question's been asked and answered lots of times previously before asking the same question again and again and again. Stan, <laughs> I agree. Stan Stanley. Everybody should go listen to all the old episodes. Well, there, yeah. you know, we've we've now. I mean, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I mean, if it were up to me, I would have like highlighted, like I would have done a best of show, where we have, you know, you if we could have done a lot of things where we talk about, you know, we don't. This isn't the Dewey hmm. Decimal System for Christ's sakes. Okay, Baltic. Yeah. Baltic Blade says unsolicited advice: never, ever neglect your teeth health. Teeth health, tooth health, teeth health. No matter how much you're afraid of the dentist. Oh. Baltic Blades have been on three times now. Hello, you're on the show. How can we help you? And who are you? Well, hey, it's the illustrious Craig Lockwood. How's it going, man? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. I'm Neil. I'm Neil Maximus Knives. I'm out here in Lufkin, Texas. There he is. Uh, just came on, wanted to see. We've got two things. One. House is looking awesome. Jeff, oh. you're great. And if Moreco could ever forgive me and unblock me, I promise I will not tag him anymore. <laughs> that would be awesome, too. You got What's it your hand right. again? <laughs> Maximus Knives. Maximus Knives. All right, let me go see what you did. <laughs> oh, don't go see what he did. Just fucking it was, it just was give like him a the... year ago, man. It was Dude, give him the tag people too. <laughs> you gotta give him the. You gotta give him the uh, the uh, parole. You gotta let him out for good behavior, <laughs> for parole. Christ's sakes. <laughs> How can we help you, Neil? No, okay. So, question: If you had to put your shop anywhere in the world, and it was gonna be your forever shop, where would it be, and why? Fucking good question, Neil. Oh, ho ho. Jeff, you go Years first. ago, my wife and I used to go to St. John and the Virgin Islands. And it's a small island that you have to, you go, you fly into St. Thomas and then you take a ferry to St. John. And it's very, it's like 75% national rainfall, uh, national park. So it's like kind of like, usually it's like the cruise line people go there for a day, but like you can get real, like, you know, it's great. So there was a, t we went every year and it's reasonably priced if you do it a certain way. We used to go all the time. Not all the time, but we went a few times. And we thought, I thought she could be, a, you know, you could be a nurse practitioner here. And then I could just like weld on <laughs> sailing ships. And I felt like I could get a, make a, a shop, you know, on St. John. So I would have loved to have lived on St. John. Nice. Right on. <clears throat> nice. Morocco, what have you got? You know, actually, I would stay in Olympia. And in fact, there is a beautiful property here. It's a friend of the family's, and they've actually talked to us kind of about the idea of buying their property. Problem is, it's like a million dollar property, but it's fucking gorgeous. <laughs> it's uh, it's five acres, beautifully manicured. They they use it as a like a wedding venue. 
um, like half of the acreage or maybe a couple acres is just like, kind of like parking area. And I could see, and it's already got a, like a giant barn that could be converted into a shop. Um, it's, it's a really great spot. Um, but I would definitely stay around here because I, I you know, I really enjoy being around family, uh, and having all of our families here. So having family around, um, and that place would definitely be one where if we, that would be our one and done, you know, we'd buy that and we'd stay there until the day we die, basically. Mm. So, anybody wants to look it up? It's called Albies Gardens on Instagram. <laughs> nice. I think um, we're, we're quite fortunate. We own, we own like a small like forest um, and it's it's like deathly quiet there. It's, it's beautiful. It's super, super quiet. Um, I think they're building like a tree house like a huge treehouse workshop um that would be that would be pretty cool um yeah that's that's a really good question that that would get me thinking all week that one that's a good one what about what about yourself <laughs> what about yourself what what's your perfect me? place i would, I would 1000% go to neil kamamura shop on top of that mountain overlooking the ocean in hawaii nice. and work there for the rest of my life i would sleep in the <laughs> corner just to work in that shop all nice. the time, it's awesome. That's a, you could swap hair tips with Neil yeah. and so on. It'd be lovely. I mean, I unblocked up the wire. Right, right. Neil, Neil and Neil would be great. Yeah. Fruit all over the place. <laughs> I'm sorry. Fruit all over the place. He unblocked oh, me. God, I unblocked oh, you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I unblocked hey, you. See? Oh, we go. Hey, see, look at this. You called oh, in. You apologized. You owned up to it. <laughs> that was a listen. That was redemption right there, yeah, Neil. Man. You did it. You came in there like a champion. That was a it championship happened. call. <laughs> It's a for real thing. It's we're a gonna for real get, thing. On we're going to get a lot of these calls now, Morocco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I'm you sorry. Have... I'm sorry. I'm nice. sorry. Don't block me again. Nice one, Neil. Good to speak <laughs> nice to you. Nice job. Sorry. That was a good call. Yeah. Bye -bye. If you want to call in to beg for forgiveness, the lines are open. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, and the Dude. reason I got I, for a while I was on a blocking rampage because all these people that I had never met in my entire life were tagging me in this stupid contest shit, which yes I know I've tagged <laughs> you guys in, but I know you guys, <laughs> but these are complete yeah. strangers, and I'm just like who the fuck is this? And I'm just like bye, <laughs> and blocked them. So, but nice. it was nice of him nice. to redemption time. That was nice. Yeah. Where I have we? one Where... last, uh, I know you didn't ask. Um, yeah. Like I said, people, if you want to send them in, send them in. I think people are trying to call. Um, Ben's Bites says, I know you didn't ask, but using vice grips to hold the hidden tang slash handle when freehand grinding gives you added control and stability. I All used right. to do that, but I don't anymore. I'm on, hmm. the, I'm on the cutting a slot in a piece of wood and taping it together situation yeah like a fake handle. fake handle mm. that's what i like nice okay okay shall we do our dreams wait first? a second okay <laughs> wait, hold, on a minute okay. Here. hold on a minute here <laughs> what uh what grinder do you use Morocco. I Tell use, us what grinder you I use. I use a broad back, and i'm gonna be using it this week to grind this giant sword because one of the awesome features of it is it flips over sideways so the belt runs parallel to the ground and uh you know it's a super fancy great grinder grinder built for makers by makers um you know it's got all these it's got a lot of flexibility and versatile attachments all kinds of stuff uh, one of the things actually i'm hoping to get from them is a the buffing arm attachment i love the idea of being able to have variable speed buffer because right now my only buffer goes full on speed, which is terrifying. Um, but they also got surface grinding attachment. They have small wheel attachment, slack arm attachments. They're they're actually I just been seeing uh, who is it? I, they're they're sending out new uh, new deeper attachment arms uh, for extra clearance behind the belts. Um, but if you go, well, Jeff Jeff knows the info better than I do. But if you go to their website. Uh, what the 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 shipping's involved in the in the price so there's no extra cost of shipping within you continental united states right right and flat there... rate boxes the prices yeah. the the shipping is included so they're not going to nickel and dime you it's they're great and if in they're doing deals uh special shipping deals with canada that i'm not 100 percent sure of but if you have any questions you should reach out to ryan and vince Vin, i mean they'll tell you whatever you need to know and uh, look, they make a great grinder. It's a great grinder. 
and uh, I love it. I love mine. Nice. Nice. And can people get discounts with them, too? If you put in uh, Knife Talk 10, you can get 10% off when you go to broadbeckironworks.com, and you don't have to buy a whole grinder. You can you can buy an attachment. Like, if you want to buy parts, they have parts that are going to work with your grinder, generally speaking. Um, and it's like, you know, that's also the thing with uh, even heat. You want to get some of them little pins because you broke every one of them little ceramic rods. You go ahead and go to get that too. You don't have to buy all of it. You just can buy parts. Mm. Great. Nice. Nice. So I think by now, Knife Talk 10 is pretty universal. You can use it everywhere. If you're ordering a pizza online, try Knife Talk 10. Oh Whatever God. you're doing, always put <laughs> Knife Talk 10 in the promo code box. You never know. It may work. Okay. The weekend is here. Um, Monday will soon be with us. I don't know about you guys, but on Monday here, it's a it's a like a holiday. Um, is it the same for wait, you? Easter Monday. Wait, Easter Monday. I just thought Easter was on Sunday. Yeah, but we have Good Friday on the Friday, and we have Easter Monday, so we have a bank holiday either side. God, you guys are Personally, you guys are wow. too you're soft over there. <laughs> I've never heard of Easter Monday. Oh, yeah, Jeff is, is chiming in again. I mean, you got to get to work. <laughs> what the fuck? Jeff. Easter Monday? What the hell? You, they got it too easy over there in France. They're locking you well, down well, and sitting you out. And in the UK, it's, it's, it's a thing. It always growing up is like mm-hmm. Easter bank holiday weekend. It's a, you know, it's a four day four day weekend every Easter. So anyway, so you guys are back in work Monday. <laughs> I'm back to work on Sunday. What's the... Oh, oh. even on Sunday. Jesus. <laughs> Every that's, Sunday, right, baby, that's right, that's right. That's exactly button. the right word to say. <laughs> um, what's the big plan then, Racco, for the week? Where would you like to be? Uh, um, so that like sword, I got to get that... and resurrected. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I, I got to get that sword ground. And so, fingers crossed, everything goes smooth with that. I'm going to take my time. I'm not going to rush through it because I don't grind very many swords. Uh, so far, I've only done two in my life, and but I think again having that broadback to lay it over uh, is going to be a really uh, beneficial to making this happen, um, in, in a, a productive manner, I guess. Um, and then other than that, oh, I got to get this Mokume spacer material worked out. It's copper, and copper is a funky material, and it work hardens really fast. And so I'm probably going to be doing a little bit of drilling and then anneal it and then drill it some more and anneal it and drill it some more and anneal it and work it until I got a good slot in there for uh, the tang for the spacer on this handle, next handle that's coming up. Um, those are the biggest things right now for me. Yeah, those are the biggest things for me coming up this week. <clears throat> nice, nice. Jeffrey. <laughs> just gonna keep on going <clears throat> pardon me i'm psyched i got i got lots of stuff to do i cleaned out this different area in my shop that was a dump and now it's an extra sanding station closer to my grinders so i'm slowly slowly getting everything back together and i actually did some forging this week which was so much fun and um i just gotta i gotta hey i gotta get cracking on the on my order list which i'm doing and then um I might look, I'm psyched. My kid, my kid's swim team is having a winning season. And it's like, my kid just got first place in the varsity breaststroke. And I'm like, we're like over the moon. So I heard, to, I was listening to your um, full blast with Chris Zepp today. And you were talking about your kids swimming and they're doing swim meets like remotely. Right. That sounds nuts. Sounds nuts. Well, it, they're, <laughs> it's actually interesting because somebody, somebody sent a message saying, how do you do a meet? And so each team is at their home pool, and then they have, they're they connected by, uh, I guess it's like basically a Zoom call. There's officials at both pools. They start everything at the same time, and they do it based on time. I got a feeling that, you know, they do the t- they do, everyone does the timing separately. It's not like, you know, but mm. it's actually interesting because I feel like the girls are less intimidated because they don't see someone, like, swimming ahead of them. So they're able to swim their best stroke. So it's it's been neat. And, yeah, uh, Full Blast has been great. I got a guest coming up in a couple of weeks. I It's going to be very interesting. And that's all I'm going to say. A maker or a 
Maker. What sort of field? A maker, but someone that you probably have all seen at some point in your life. A maker and a shaker. Might, nice. might be a movie, TV person, TV personality. Oh. And with that said, pick of the week. If you have HBO Max, go check out my friend, Andrew Koji in Warrior. as a fucking awesome show. Andrew Koji is the man. He whipping everybody's ass. I have no idea. He's kicking all sorts of ass. <laughs> he's show? awesome. Is it a movie or yeah? A show? He's it's based off the 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 writings of Bruce Lee. Man, he whipping he kicking people all over the place, kicking them and punching them and slapping them around. Oh, I see. Fucking good. You're all pumped up. So I'm having the full weekend off. So I'm having three days off: Saturday, Sunday, and the Look Monday. Look at you! But which I'm super pleased. With. My wife and I, we don't spend time together with our kids because we're both so busy. It's like one of us has the kids, the other one get work done. Then we sort of swap over, and we find that you know, we yeah, it's great to have lots of time with the kids, but we never do it together. So this weekend, it's her birthday, so neither of us are working, um, and the sun's shining. So yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be nice. Um, but that yeah, Tuesday is back back to the grind. Um, you you just mentioned a film that you saw this week. Um, I saw a film last night, and it's been playing on my mind all day. It was brilliant. It was um, mu- it's called Music, um, and it was by um, directed by Sia, the musician. Mm. Um, and it's it's not about music. It's about a a, a, a young girl with you know se- severe sort of autism, um, and it's it's a brilliant brilliant film so the way they sort of you get to see what this girl is thinking is via like these like musical interludes and it sounds shit it's like my my wife's telling me i was like well this sounds really bad you know some sort of like dance interpretation in the middle of a film but it works so so well it's brilliant um yeah music um by sia it's on on itunes and so on you can you can rent it it's really good um and what else have i got for the week coming up then um we got the official opening of our bar on Sunday for my wife's birthday. Um, so it's just my wife and I and our two kids. That's all, because we're not allowed to do anything else. You're getting wasted. Um, <laughs> wasted, yeah. Um, which reminds me, I want to um, put an order in with you guys. I want I want to build a collection of um, bottle openers, like really cool bottle openers. Um, and I thought I'd start with you two. So yeah, if I commission something, something cool, something a bit different from you two guys. I'm not taking okay. money from you, Blockwood. Do you call him well, Blockwood? I need to, unfortunately. Hey, Blockwood. I'm not taking Blockwood. money off you, Blockwood. <laughs> wow. Wow. It, make something nice, and I'll pay you. Something I don't want that. your money. I'm happy to help you. I mean, you don't. You're not going to have a bottle in that joint. It's going to be all kegs. It's all okay. I know, but it would be nice to have. Um, stuff up on a wall, you know. So to, yeah, I'll use them. They'll be used. I know. But, uh, I know, know what I'm going to make. I don't yeah. know. It'd be nice. Yeah. Oh, what yeah. are you going to make? Cool. I'm not telling. Okay. <laughs> this could be, this could be a knife talk competition <sighs> where you two could compete <laughs> against each other. Certainly not doing that shit. I'm not doing that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one more thing as well. Actually, um, we always talk about um people reaching out to us saying, you know, could we have a free knife? Um, you know, we'll promote it with their, you know, with their twenty Instagram followers or whatever it may be. <laughs> um, and we always say it's a bad, bad idea. Never do it. Um, but um, last night, um, I was actually on my phone as the email had come through, so I was looking through it, and um, it was the guys. R- really strange. At first, I thought it was a joke, and I had to sort of Google it. Um, but it's called Food Tribe. Um, so it's a, it's a YouTube channel, but it's also an app as well. So it's like an Instagram for food, I suppose. Mm. Um, but the people behind it are the hosts of, well, the, the ex-hosts of Top Gear. So it's, it's, it's James May, oh, wow. um, Jeremy Clarkson, and Richard Hammond. And they're doing this thing called Food Tribe, which is re- it's just strange to me, you know, why they're doing food now. Um, but they reached out and asked um, for one of my knives to do an unboxing live on their YouTube channel. Nice. Um and normally I'd be like, well, no, but I think this could be quite interesting. So, um, <clears throat> so I'm working with them on a knife for for James May, and it'll be it'll be yeah, that's exciting, different. That's super cool. Yeah, it's 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 a weird one because normally I, I steer away away you know from things like that, but uh, you know I I think he's pretty cool. So yeah, nice. 
Which also brings me to, did you guys see um, Jamie Oliver reaching out to Fingal this week? Giving him lots of love on Instagram. How good was no, that? I didn't catch that. Oh, he was, was he had him in his cool. stories. He was great. Yeah. He gave him a lot of love, didn't he? He was saying, how how, how genius is this guy? He makes such a cheese. Would he call him Fungus? And he makes these... <laughs> I, I think he called him Fergal. <laughs> I think. Oh, um, my man, <laughs> Fungus makes the best knives. <laughs> Fungal Ferguson. <laughs> but um, yeah, he gave him lots and lots of love, which was really nice to see, actually. So yeah, that was. He's cool a good dude. <clears throat> Jamie yeah, Oliver's doing well, a good job for a lot of guys, so it's real nice. Yeah, he's he's a cool dude. He's a cool dude. So yeah, that's that's my week really. Um, a few days off, then back to it on on Tuesday. That's a show. That's a show. One minute, 29 minutes, and 30 seconds. What? Not bad at all. <laughs> Sorry, one hour, 29 minutes, and 30 Tell seconds. Tell the truth. How, how much have you had to drink before this <laughs> podcast? <laughs> Just a, only a couple. Okay. Only a couple. A couple. Anyway, that's a show. We shall speak to you all again next week. And remember, if you've got any anything you want to send us, it's Knife Talk Podcast on Instagram. Um, and you can call into the show as well. We shall put up a, a reminder and sort of the day before or on the day. Um and yeah, it'd be good to good to hear. Good from you. calls this week. Very good, yeah. And it all went without a hitch this week, which was which was nice. Real nice. <laughs> Last week I had about oh, we'll talk about this later. Anyway, thank you all for listening. Speak to you soon. Bye for now. This show is brought to you by The Makery, the podcast network for makers. No audio problems. Great calls. Yeah, none at all. I was, I was, I was, I was going to say last week I had about fifty-four tracks to edit. Holy fuck! From where it? we every time we um, lost connection, we'd come back so we get another three tracks, another three tracks, another three tracks, um, and then they all went down. So I had to have the multiple three tracks that I've got on the backup as well. So this file to edit was just mental, Yikes. mental. But um, yeah, today was super, super smooth. Really cool. Hey, while we're here, when you, I think I wrote some funny things for for Brian. If you want to put pull the rest of them up, let me, let me pull them up. Yeah, let's I'll wait there. It's gonna start from the beginning again, but bear with me. Check 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 check. Oh, jeez. <laughs> 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 yeah. Disgusting. He's chewing on it. La 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 Combat Abrasives makes the world's best abrasive belts for knife makers. Available in any size at unbelievable prices. Go take a look at CombatAbrasives.com and get 15% off with promo code KNIFETALK15. God, do it now! God damn it. Combat Abrasives makes the world's best abrasive belts for the knife maker. Available in any size and at unbelievable prices. Go take a look at CombatAbrasives.com and get 15% off with promo code KNIFETALK15. Do it now. Contact us via DM at Knife Talk Podcast on Instagram. <laughs> it's that easy. Fucking. Contact us via DM at Knife Talk Podcast on Instagram. It's that We're easy. Pro. Did you know that you could contact us via DM <laughs> at Knife Talk Podcast on Instagram? <laughs> it's that easy. Contact oh us God. via DM oh at God. Knife Talk Podcast on Instagram. Oh it's that easy. Oh, Contact Jesus us via Christ. DM oh, at so Knife Talk go Podcast on Instagram. It's that easy. Hey, did you know you can contact us <laughs> at Knife Talk <laughs> Podcast on Instagram? It, it's that easy. You're listening to the Knife Talk Podcast right here on the Makery Network. You're listening to the Mustard Patina Podcast right here on the Makery <laughs> Network. How about some hot takes? Nice. How about some hot takes? How about some hot takes? <laughs> How about some 
Hot takes. Hot takes. Hot takes. Hot takes with Jeff Vader. Jeff Vader and his hot takes. And his mustard patinas. Unsolicited advice. Hey, man, can I ask you a question? Hey, man, can I ask you a question? Get off my phone! Get out! Do it! Do it now! <laughs> hey, man, can I ask you a question? <laughs> hey, man, can I ask you a question? I don't know how long this goes on for, by the way. Hey, man, <laughs> can I ask you it's a question? Kind of, hey, man, <laughs> can I ask you a question? That was it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> put some work into that. Dude, oh, that's a professional right there. Oh, yes. Oh, Jesus yes. Christ. <clears throat> he did that all in one take, I think. Uh, yeah, it's all one file. Yeah, it's just one take. Damn. I don't, I don't think I would touch another... I wouldn't pick up another file. I wouldn't pick... <laughs> I wouldn't pick a goddamn thing up if I had a voice like that. Honey and lemon, look after your voice. Get and, yeah, fat that's all you and need to think paid. <laughs> Talk about snacks. I mean, I think a voice like that, you got to drink whiskey and smoke cigarettes. I think you're in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still can't believe, Jeff, no snacks in it. You, you ban eating in it. No wonder, no wonder Carl left to be a mongo wherever it was. <laughs> I, ha I, don't, I, I don't want to relax here. Like, I hated cigarette breaks in college because I was just like, I'm never going to get back to work. So I'm not, I'm not that hungry. When I'm working hard, I don't get hungry. I go home for lunch, and then I go home. So you I don't, used to I don't do know Pizza time. Fridays. We did Pizza Fridays on Saturdays when I had when we had kids here to work. <laughs> Buying pizza. I had <laughs> just, to child be, labor just to be clear. That. Pizza. Yeah, I had I had at one point I had I had two or three interns. And I thought I should at least buy a pizza, so I had to do pizza pizza Saturdays. You know, we did that a couple of times, and I was just like, "You're all getting too comfortable. <laughs> Eat your pizza and get back to work." <laughs> I'm a so, slumlord. Um, I've been speaking to Emily at Dharma Steel, um, and yeah, we're all set. We're all set basically. So there was one thing because um, she copied the two of you into the email as well about like the schedule and all the rest of it. Um, and one of them was us sort of taking to the stage for 15 minutes. Um, and I wasn't quite sure what that was about. So I said, well, that would probably be a bit weird. Why? Um, Do you like a presentation? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it just seems seems a little strange. So she said, don't worry. She said, we'll just sort of introduce you. Um, and you can say, you know, we're going to be doing a live show today. So you can, you can come into our room and we're doing the live show, that kind of thing. So it'll be, it'll be super easy to do, super informal. Um, on the 12th. Um, I'm doing like a tech run through with them um, because they're using this weird sort of app to have these multiple rooms and so on. Um, so I'll literally just dial in, make sure everything works with regards to the audio. Um, but we should be good. Um, yeah, and that's that's pretty much it. So they want us to interview um, the the chef that that's there, um, which should be cool. Um, and then yeah, we'll just get the the other sort of makers who are having a a room. They'll just you know just pop in and out of our room and we can have a chat with them and a lot of kind of thing we could still maybe even do calls coming in if, if we want because it's just it's just it'll just be a normal show for us I suppose. okay but is the chef well when we do the uh, interviews Florence, we're... right oh sorry yeah well, we were gonna yeah we we're gonna keep <laughs> that, that a secret? secret nobody listens nobody well, listens to this we were part gonna, of the show yeah we're, we're gonna keep that a secret but yeah, yeah fine <laughs> we're fine um we just need to I think it's important when we do the because we we're not going to have a whole lot of time, so I think we want to be very. Fifteen minutes is not a long time, and especially considering Damasil is probably going to want us to hit a certain. I want to be as prepared as possible, especially with the chef. And are we speaking to the owner? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Pez, um, who is, yeah, he's like the CEO of Dharma Steel. Um, I've already spoken to him once. He's you know he's he's a young guy. He's pretty cool. Um, speaks really good English. So yeah, it shouldn't be a problem okay. at all. Well, I just you know I think it'd be good if we were prepared and you know and it wasn't like you know I just don't want to be clumsy with these people. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I agree. Yeah. yeah. And then are we gonna do our show like take we take calls and do DM just just talk about what's going on or. I think so. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we'll just do almost like a regular show, I suppose. Tighten our belts um, a little bit. Yeah, what what day of the week is it on? Um, let me have a look. 
do, do. It's the 24th, I think, isn't it? No, it's not the 24th. I, I don't know what day of the week it's on. Um, either way, if it's, you know, we, it could always be a, an extra show for the um, for the week if we wanted, or it could just be our main Friday show, whatever. But yeah, I think we, we carry on as we are. We have, we have the same sort of structure. The only difference being is that we may have, whereas at the moment we're having calls coming in, we may have people to just come into the room and we can then invite them into the chat pretty much the same way we do with, with, we're doing with calls And now. should we have, are they going to want us as video or... Yeah, it's all video. Yes. Sorry, I didn't mention that. It's all video. So I should probably um, not be in my Jeep. <laughs> I should, like, you, could do. you know, I could should look do. a little bit more pro, I guess. However, in yeah. my mind, sounding good is better than looking good. Yeah. You could just take that in your color lab, take that lovely painting you've got, and just put it behind you like a backdrop in your Jeep. <laughs> You'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Uh, yeah, that was the, yeah. I, I, I forgot. It, 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 it's going to be video, obviously. But it's going. Is um, it? But, how are they going to see? Are they going to see all three of us in one square? Or? I don't know. So that I'll know on the twelfth when we do the like the tech run through of it all. Um, yeah, I. I think it's going to work like Zoom. So it's up to the viewer how they want to do it. So. It can either be whoever's talking, whoever's like making sound, the camera will just go to them full screen, or they can have like a gallery view where the three of us are always shown. So I think the the actual viewer will be able to decide which way they want to see it. Okay. If you know what I mean. So, so just think it, you're, you're always on screen. Think of it that and way. I would only suggest that Emily. So no knocking one out in the middle of the. What? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> no knocking your fifth one out of the day in the middle of the call. <laughs> what do you mean knocking my fifth one out? I'm talking about you? <sighs> I think that Emily needs to kind of give us an idea of what they're looking for in regards to <clears throat> the interviews. Because it's, you know, I can't, I don't think we should be, you Holy know. Holy shit. Hey, chef, how's your dick? You know, it's like, we're not doing that. No, no, no. We, I mean, we'll ask him, you know, what, what knives he likes using and that, that kind of thing. And, you know, keep it knife related. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it is. So I pulled it up their website. It is April 24th and it's noon Pacific time. So kind of the same time we do our recording for the normal podcast. Noon to three. Perfect. Okay. So that's a sat. that's a Saturday, isn't it? What? 24th. April, surely they're not doing on a Saturday. April 24th? Yep. Oh fuck! I mean, mm. awesome. They're not listening to this part, are they? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's Saturday, so it's up to you whether you still want to record one on the Friday. Um, you know, we we've got you know nearly two months. Two months. You're talking April, right? We're in April now, aren't we? Yeah, we've got two months. Like, what's the matter with you? What's the matter with you, Lockwood? We yeah, could. We got three weeks. We then. could do two. Because there's a chance that this Damasteel one might not sound good to our listeners. Mm. I'm not mad yeah. at doing two, but uh, but I don't know. You know, your time, you guys, are timing might not be good. Or we could do two and then use one for you know taking a week off next week. Yeah, it's um, up to you guys, honestly. I'll, I'll happily do two, but yeah, yep. it makes, it makes no, no difference to me. And then yeah, we can okay, do, cool. and then we can see how it sounds. Yeah. So, so basically, the the way it'll work with the Dharma Steel thing. Um, so we wouldn't be using Squadcast like we're using now. We'd be using this this different app. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but um, obviously I'm recording the the audio here as well. So that's the audio we'd use then for the show. So we we'd be fine. It would it would sound the same to the listener. Um, you know, no, no matter what app we use, it would, it would always sound the same. So that's not a problem. I think it would be funny if we did the Friday because then we can have like nervous conversations about what the fuck we're going to do. And this might be a disaster and kind of build it up as being like a total train wreck. Hmm. But <laughs> nobody will hear that until the Monday, so which is after it's happened. So what? <laughs> that's the, that's the, it's called what's called the uh, theater of the mind, ladies and germs. Yeah. Theater of the mind. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's do. It. Let's do that. Let's do a Friday one. And then we'll do the, do the Saturday mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, anything else we need to sort out? I think that's pretty much it, isn't it? Hmm. 
I do love those can't twist clamps. They they're pretty cool. I've only used them a few times. Um but yeah, they 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 look solid, you know, they they they're look great. good too. Yeah, I yeah. haven't used it yet, but I think it's going to be perfect for my little micro billets I do for my chef's knives. Mm. It's I love them. I, they're the ones I grab now. So yeah, I like I like the way that the the face the jaws they sort of, they angle as well. So if you if you don't have to be perfectly um, right the, the the feet pivot right you know opposite each other yeah. yeah there's a bit of a pivot so if you've got an angle to do you'd be able to clamp down an angle as long as it's not too too much of an angle it's pretty cool yes um, I think that show went really well actually yeah. it was it, it it flowed nice and yeah the the callers were good um, that. <laughs> Asking for, for record to start following again was was that was funny. he's been bugging me for a while. Neil's the Neil's a good guy. He's just like I'm working hard. I'm working hard to get him. I to keep going. Keep at it. Keep at it. You did a good job, man. You got to give him. You got to give him a salute for that. Sure. Yeah, but I think that's opening floodgates now for for many more. Oh, it, and speaking of which, the the bots have kind of stopped. Oh, good. Kind okay. of. Okay. Like I like we 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 were up to ten thousand seven hundred followers, and then it dropped down a hundred. But then I see like every few minutes, you know, every few time or when I check in, we'll get ten more bots. So, I mean, oh. it was a substantial. I mean, we ended up with like three thousand extra bots. Yes. Yeah. Wow. But I mean, it was weird. It wasn't really. It felt. It didn't feel like a solid victory. It felt like. Stop swarming me, please. Yeah, it was strange. It was strange. And then, yeah, we still didn't really get to the bottom of it either. And also, something I forgot to mention on the show, actually. Um, I received a gift this week, and um, I asked, you know, family and friends, and nobody sent it to me. So I don't know whether it was a listener or not. I don't know. Um, it was like, a, you know, Burt's Bees, you know, the uh, like the men's health, you know, you know, the beauty products. It was wax for your face, right? Yeah, and your hands, and there's right. some for your feet, and it was, it was a mixture of all these different things. Um, you know, it was a nice, it was a cool gift, but I haven't got a clue who it was off. Huh. Um, so I'm assuming it was a listener to the show because I said I've asked family and friends, and, and it was none of them. So I'll have to remember to um, mention it next week. Do you think people know your address? Ah, <sighs> oh, quite true. Yeah, quite true. No, they don't. <laughs> hmm. Unless you've sent maybe them it was stuff. one of those. Is your return at, is your yeah. private address your return address? Yes, it is. Yes. Ah, probably probably was a, a customer then, maybe. Yeah. It was like a thank you. Hmm. Yeah. But it's just weird that there's no note with it, you know? And, sure. Yeah. Always, always strange. Always strange. <sighs> this is what people tune in for. <laughs> <laughs> this is the secret show, everybody. You're wondering if it's, why really we're turning things about- off. Jeff's five rounds of I think I this is my guess. Jeff Jeff has been selected to enter some of his work into a juried exhibition. No I'm you know what? You give me too much credit. I'm done with those fucking things. I got involved with those juried exhibitions and I'll never do them again. Fuck you. I will never <laughs> do those again. They're such horseshit. I the art world is like I mean you got to give me the whole kit and caboodle. My last show that I almost did, I'll tell you this real quick. This is a fucking terrible. I had a gallerist come to my shop, and then we spent the day together. We were talking about my work and talking about the body of my work, and we're talking about, I mean, just getting to the, you know, and then she offered me a solo show in her gallery. And I said, I will make all new work for the solo show. You won't have anything. As of right now, everything I do will be brand new. And I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I was excited. It was going to be a really great solo exhibit at a really you know nice gallery. And then the woman said to me, all right, here are the rules. We'll be open four weekends, and you have to be here to sell your work two of the weekends. So we're going to be open eight days. Eight days? No. Eight days, four weekends. You're going to be open... Yeah. <sighs> yes, eight days. You're going to be open eight days. And I'm going to be at the gallery to man the gallery for half of those days. So I said to her, so I'm making new work. I have to I have to promote the work. I have to sell, and I have to sell the work, and I have to watch the work. And you're taking 50%. And she's still getting their cut. Yeah. Fuck you. I'm going to make knives. And that was it. That was yeah. the last thing. And now it's like those juried shows. Don't fuck those. I'm not doing any of that shit. You got to... 
you gotta you gotta pay me now. You gotta pay me. I'm not mm. fucking around with these people anymore. But that was a good guess. Mm. Much more, lo- much like more feel, al- uh, How- illustrious. And I'll be able to talk about it <laughs> later. So, I'm thinking a TV no. show or something. No. no. Okay. If if you guessed it, I would tell you. Okay. But it's no, it's not a TV show. But it's good. Okay, let's leave yeah. it at that. I've got to go. It's ten to midnight here now. Mm-hmm. Happy Late Easter. <laughs> happy birthday, yeah. Amy. Gee. Yeah, happy Christ. birthday to your wife. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, we're gonna have fun. Um thank you both. I shall speak to you all um soon. Cheers, have a you good too. weekend. Bye-bye. 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 This show is brought to you by The Makery, the podcast network for makers.